Now that we know what many-to-many -many relationships are, and we have an idea of how to solve this problem using join tables, let's look at how we can solve it in the object-oriented world, specifically in the MVC framework. And in this lesson, just like the, the one exploring one-to-many relationships, we're not going to live code all of the pieces here. I'm going to talk about the specific components and explain some of the more um, new and interesting and difficult points. And you're going to be guided through the activity of building this application yourself and adding these new features um, through one of our lessons, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, the models. So in this class, or in this, this uh, lesson rather, we're going to look at how to set up our model classes to have many-to-many -many relationships in a way that Entity Framework will be able to manage those for us and store those in the database. The second lesson, we'll look at how we can actually use those relationships and use those different uh, classes that have many-to-many -many relationships in our controllers and views. So we talked about the fact that uh, a many-to-many -many relationship on the relational side will be managed by a join column. It turns out that in the object-oriented world, for uh, c -sharp and .NET at least, there's going to be a very similar uh, analog, which is essentially you might think of it as a join class. So this is um, what we're going to look at first. So again, this is the same scenario we described where we have a cheese class that can have, that can be in, in multiple menus and a menu class that can be in multiple or can have multiple cheeses. And so we'll look at those classes specifically, but before I do that, I want to choose this, this new class, which is going to be the intermediary. And so we call it cheese menu because it's going to be basically the join class for cheese and menu individually. And so this is a simple class. All it has is a, um, a pair of properties. Well, two pairs of properties, I should say. Each, each one of these is a pair of properties. So the first one is going to involve the menu class. It's going to have, I'm going to have a, a, um, an integer here, menu ID, and a, a menu property itself. And the second pair is um, a cheese ID and an actual cheese. And so we saw before in the one-to-many one relationship um, video that these would be um, essentially you have an ID and what's called a navigation property. So the actual reference to the specific class is called a navigation property in this scenario. And so by virtue of having this intermediary class, just like the join table, um, each one of these is going to correspond to a relationship. So if I have a cheese that's in a specific menu, then I will correspondingly have a cheese menu object that has a reference to that cheese and to that menu. And just like in the relational world where we saw that we could have many to many using those pairs of IDs, this will facilitate the same behavior when we're dealing with objects. So let's go ahead and look at the menu class. So this is new and the menu class is fairly simple. It just has an ID property, that's going to be our primary key in the database. It has a name, and then has a list of cheese menus. Now this is um, potentially somewhat you know, um, confusing to wrap your brain around at first. We don't want to have a list of cheeses. You might say, well, our menu should have a bunch of cheeses. Now that's true, but what really happens is that our menu has a bunch of relationships to cheeses, right? And so we said that our cheese menu class is going to store those relationships. So that's really what we have. We have a list of relationships to cheeses, and that is what's going to be manifested in this list uh, of cheese menu objects, okay? And correspondingly, in our cheese class, we have a list of cheese menu objects as well because just the same as in the menu class, our cheese can belong to several menus, which means it has a relationship to several menus, and we said that we should think of this intermediate, intermediary class as constituting a relationship between two classes, okay? So we have, uh, the only thing that's new from the last time, we previously already had the category stuff here, is this list of cheese menus. Okay, so this intermediary object is going to play the role of the join table in the object-oriented world. So when I want to use this within my DB context, recall that a DB context is what allows us to interact with our objects via the data layer to get, the, get them out of and put them into the database and to manage those, uh, the relationships in the table side. Um, before, we added a DB set for each of the classes that we wanted to persist. So we added um, a DB set that stored cheese objects, a DB set that stored cheese category objects. Here, I've done something similar. I've added a DB set that stores menus and a DB set that stores cheese menus. These are both of my new 
my new classes in this um, set of related objects. So simply putting these DB sets and declaring them within our CheeseDB context is going to uh, allow us to access these collections of objects via the data layer, via the database, using the tools of the entity framework. However, there's one more thing we need to do, which is to set up the primary key associated with our new cheese menu class. So um, remember that we talked about a join table and we talked about how a join table doesn't have a primary key column that has a composite primary key. The join table had two columns. Each of those columns corresponded to uh, one side of the relationship. So it had a cheese ID column and a menu ID column, and that together those formed a primary key because that pair should be unique. Uh, the relationship between two different objects on, on either side should be unique. And so here, rather than declaring somehow that relationship via uh, attributes, we have to declare it programmatically. So in my CheeseDB context, I override the method on model creating, which is part of the DB context class that we're extending. So I override that method. And that method takes a model builder and I can use that model builder to customize my, uh, my object relational model. And so this model builder will allow me to determine the primary key for my cheese menu class. And so you use this uh, somewhat obtuse syntax, which we're not going to go into the, the, the full details of it. You'll only need it in the setting where, uh, well, for this class at least, you'll only need it in the setting where we're building many-to-many -many relationships. And you can just mimic this. We'll provide you know, sample code that you can cut and paste and customize. But essentially what this is doing is this is setting the cheese menu classes table to have a primary key that's composite and that consists of a cheese ID and the menu ID together. So what makes an entry in that table unique is that uh, the pair of numbers is unique. So I can't have, you know, one, one listed in that table twice. I can only have it listed once because that pair has to be unique. That pair is a primary key. So setting these up will allow us to, um, yeah, have the, the right relational mapping. And then in the next video, we'll look at how to use this object relational mapping within our controllers and within our views.